yoga has changed my life. It positively transformed it. So much so that I became a positive psychology professor just so that I could research and teach meditation and yoga. Do you know how sometimes in life you've been given a gift? Something incredible is happening to you, something that is so beneficial and so right for you that you feel as if you want to share it with as many people as possible. That's my experience with yoga. And it's very interesting for me to see how through the years, my understanding of what is yoga has completely changed. When I just started, that was 15 years ago, I thought that yoga is this. So I used to push my body into every pose. I used to work very, very hard with everything that I've done as part of my practice because I thought that this is the goal of yoga, right? This is what I'm supposed to do when I practice yoga. You know what happened? I got injured more than once. Yeah, really injured. I got injured because I wasn't really paying attention to my body. I wasn't really paying attention to my edge, to how far should I go. I was too consumed by the effort and the attempt to go as far as I can. Another thing that happened is that I got frustrated. I don't know if it ever happened to you in a yoga class, but I used to look around and see other people. Hmm. And some of them were more flexible than what I was, and some of them were stronger than me. And I thought, why can't I do this, and why can't I do that? And I was frustrated. That's how my practice started. But then through the years, a lot of very interesting things happened. New things came into my yoga practice. So for example, the fact that I became a vegetarian, that was part of my yoga practice. Or my daily gratitude exercises, which are so meaningful to me. They were also part of my yoga practice. And perhaps most importantly, my relationship with life has changed from one that was filled with struggle and conflict and working very hard to one that is filled with letting go, the experience of acceptance, which is I believe the heart and soul of yoga. And these insights, I believe they are very, very meaningful to us because yoga in the West is huge. We're talking about dozens of millions of people who practice daily, and we're also talking about billions of dollars that are spent every year. So yoga is really big. So how did it all start? We're talking about a practice that started thousands of years ago in India as a comprehensive practice that is dealing with every aspect of life. So for example, yoga is dealing with moral aspects of life. How can we live a moral life? Yoga is also about relationship-based questions. So how can we create a healthy relationship with ourselves, a healthy relationship with other people around us? Yoga is also about the involvement of consciousness, right? How can we reach a different state of consciousness and grow through that. And finally, yoga is also about the physical practice. Now, when I share this list with my students, with my friends, they look at me confused. They have no idea what I'm talking about. Because for them, as it is for most practitioners in the West, yoga is this practice where we go through a variety of poses with the final aim of shaping ourselves like a pretzel. This is how we think about it. And I'll give you an example. I live in the UK, and we just had a, a lifestyle survey. And in that survey, yoga was under the same category as aerobics. In fact, in that same survey, yoga came as the third most popular physical activity, physical activity, right after walking and swimming. That's how we think about yoga. But when yoga just started, it was created by rishis, who were wise people. And their goal was to create the kind of practice that would allow us to go through psychological and spiritual transformation so that we could reach 
a state of nirvana or a state of enlightenment where we are completely free from a psychological and spiritual point of view. One of those rishis, his name was Patanjali, he created the Yoga Sutras. And a sutra is it's a thread, it's a, it's a nugget of wisdom. And we have 196 sutras. I'll share one, one of the first and most popular sutras. And it defines the meaning of yoga. It says, yoga chitta vritti niroda. I know it sounds a bit weird. But it actually means yoga is the resolution of the agitations of the mind. In other words, yoga is meditation. Do you know how we all have this chatterbox, this never-ending blah, blah, blah in our heads? If you pay attention to what's going on in your head, you've got this background voice that keeps on repeating itself. Yoga allows us to turn down the volume by dealing with some of those agitations that lead to some of those voices in our heads so that we can live a life that is a little bit more peaceful, filled with a little bit more tranquility. And in the Yoga Sutras, we also find the eight limbs of yoga, which are eight stages of development, which begin with yama. The first limb is yama. And yama is all about the moral aspects and how can we create a more moral and healthy relationship with other people in the world around us. And an example of yama would be ahimsa, which means nonviolence. And that's the reason for the fact that a lot of yogis are either vegans or vegetarians because they don't want to harm animals. And a second limb of yoga is called niyama. And here, I would like us to practice something together. Because niyama is all about our internal practices. And an example of that would be swadhyaya, which means self-study, self-awareness. In other words, getting to know yourself better. And we can get to know ourselves on the yoga mat. So if we bring more breath, uh, more attention to our breath and more awareness to the body, then we can become more aware of ourselves, more aware of our thoughts. But the beauty of it is that it doesn't have to happen on the mat. We can practice yoga anywhere, anytime if we choose to. In fact, we're going to practice yoga. We're going to practice Swadhyaya right here, right now, together. Shall we do that? Yes, excellent. Beautiful. So for that purpose, I invite you to have both feet on the ground. Great. Ah, suddenly. <laughs> Sit down. Excellent. So as you have both feet on the ground, see if you can have your back straight, your chest open, so that your, that your body's alert, your body's awake. In meditation, we want to move inside, but we want to do it while being awake. See if you can have both feet on your thighs or knees, wherever they're comfortable, and let your eyes close. We begin with a few deep inhales and exhales. With every inhale, you bring awareness into the body. With every inhale, inhale with a lot of attention. See what's happening inside. And when you exhale, create softness, gentleness, surrender. There's so much tension, unnecessary tension in the body. When we bring our awareness to it, we, we allow it to soften. So see if you can soften your shoulders, your eyebrows, the cheekbones. Let the jaw relax. And we create the space within us into which we breathe, into which we bring our awareness so that we can come in touch with ourselves, so that we could learn what is happening within us. I invite you now, as you inhale, to bring your awareness all the way from the bottom of your spine to the top of your head. So as you inhale, go through your spine and then the stomach and the chest and the heart. Feel your throat, the third eye, just between the eyebrows and then the top of your head. And when you exhale, bring your awareness down from the top of your head all the way through the same route to the bottom of your spine. Imagine that you have an internal river that is flowing within you. This is the energy of life that is flowing within you. And you let your awareness swim in this incredible river that goes up and down, up and down. And I invite you now to observe and see whether anywhere in that river 
when you come in touch with these different areas in your body, something feels different. Maybe heavy, maybe stuck, maybe numb. Some other sensation that isn't open and free and flowing. And when you find such a sensation, I invite you to just pause. Bring your full awareness to it. Let go of anything else and breathe into that sensation. What happens when you bring your attention to it? And you approach it in the same way that Columbus approached a new land. It's curiosity and, and great interest. It's like, wow, what's happening here? Openness, observation. It might be that the sensation will change, shapeshift, dissolve. Whatever it is that happens, you just keep on observing it, breathing into it. You witness yourself. From that place of observation, I invite you to reconnect with your whole body, the chair where you sit, the room around you, the sound of my voice, your presence, my presence, our presence. You can then take as much time as you want, and when you feel ready, you can slowly Open your eyes. We all have, deep within, unconscious internal triggers, thoughts we're not aware of, sensations, emotions, feelings. And they are very, very important because they navigate our lives. They frequently determine whether you say yes to this opportunity or no to that option. They control us from within on an unconscious level. They make us react on an outer pilot level to many different events in our life. Yoga brings a lot of those from the shadow into the light. Think about yoga as a spotlight, which allows us to suddenly see this internal mechanism that is called you, me, us, we become aware of ourselves. And when that happens, it is so empowering. Being able to choose instead of behaving automatically, choose what's right for me because I can observe and see it. It's so powerful. We all have patterns that we keep on repeating. Some of them are unhealthy. Think about yoga as the practice that dissolves these patterns and allow us to walk through life with this great freedom. In fact, the final four limbs of yoga that I talked about, when I discussed the eight limbs, the final four are all different stages of meditation so that we could increase our level of awareness, so that we could dissolve more of these patterns, so that we could reach, reach the final an eighth limb of yoga, which is samadhi, enlightenment, freedom. The final limb that I'm going to talk about is asanas, which is the third limb, and that's the physical practice. This is where we purify body and mind. It's a beautiful part of yoga, but as we now realize, it's just one out of eight limbs. There is so much more in the practice of yoga. In its original context, yoga is presence, it's bliss, it's self-awareness, it's meditation. It is not the attempt to push our body into certain poses. If the entire practice is the physical practice, that would be the equivalent of buying a lottery ticket just so that we could draw doodles on it. It doesn't make any sense. There's a much greater prize waiting for you if you're willing to go through the practice. If you do go to yoga classes, which is wonderful, just see if you could bring more awareness to your breath during class and after class. See if you can bring more awareness to your body, every movement of the body, because when we do both of those, we have more swadhyaya. We have more self-knowledge. We dissolve more of our patterns. We are more free. See if you could practice more gratitude. Gratitude towards yourself. Gratitude towards others. We are frequently harsh towards ourselves. And as a result of that, towards others. Gratitude 
allows us this softness and acceptance, and it feels so good when you truly experience the gratitude towards yourself and others, which allows love and compassion to grow as part of your practice of yoga. And finally, see if you can let go of all the things that your mind tells you that you need and expect. Because then, and only then, when we really truly embrace all of those different wonderful practices as part of yoga, we can enjoy the full benefits and grace of this practice called yoga. If there is one message you take with you from my talk today, let it be the simple idea that yoga is a way of life. It's a way of life that invites you to transform so that you could experience your fullest potential. Thank you.